So you're in this post-industrial space, and the first thing that strikes me about this is the way in which it sets up a contrast between the outside world. You can see it through those windows with the cars rushing past, and this extraordinary, I think of it as a haunted room. It's as if Mark Alexander has drawn a line right there on the floor, and once you cross that line, it's as if you leave the everyday world and you enter this other strange world where time stands still and you find yourself in this room full of gods. These images of disembodied faces staring at each other, staring at you. And there's something very haunting about the image of this face. To me, it almost suggests a kind of drowning, that this face could be drowning in a sea. Uh, there's a sense of breathlessness. There's almost perhaps a sense of of panic in those eyes. It's very hypnotizing and it's also deeply enigmatic. It's also an image that reminds me of the legend of Midas. Everything he touched turned to gold, but in the end he was himself turned into gold, mummified as a kind of gilded image. And to me there is a sense of suffocation about, about, this, about this image. It's as if this, this face might be coming up for air from water. Um, there's a tremendous sense of breathlessness about it, and it's intensified by the medium that the artist has used. This is silkscreen, oil on canvas, silkscreen, but the silkscreen's been loaded with oil, so you get this tremendously thick surface. Something that feels as if it should be golden and shiny is actually clogged with oil. It's as if that intensifies this sense of, of not being able to breathe, of, there's something very claustrophobic about it. Now, silkscreen means also that you can reproduce an image. You can make several versions of the same image, each one different. And that also contributes very much to the effect of this room. You have the red god, the silver god. And each one is slightly different because the silkscreen process is never consistent. Here, it's as if the god's almost got a bleeding nose because of this one little drip of stray paint. But I like that effect. I like that sense that you've got here of... And I think it's strong in the show as a whole, this sense that these are fallen gods, that, that we do live in the modern world, that we don't believe in this idea of a god anymore. I think there's something very melancholic about this imagery. These pictures were also inspired by the idea of the shield, ancient image of power, and also, I think, by images of the Baroque period where kings had themselves depicted as the sun at the centre of the universe. This is very much the imagery of Louis XIV, the sun god. So what we've got here is a kind of imagery of absolute power, but Mark Alexander's undercut it partly by multiplying it. The king who thinks he's the centre of the universe is surrounded by other kings who also think they're the centre of their universe. And some of them are different colours. One is red, blood red, one is black. There's something quite sinister being said here, I feel, about, about power and the idea of power. Now, the image at the centre of the shield is actually a self-portrait. The image is based on a photograph of Mark Alexander himself as a child. And I think that's his way of reflecting on the fact that all of us, when we're children, imagine ourselves to be the absolute rulers of our own little universe. Whatever we want, we can have. Now, that's an illusion that all of us have to, to grow up from, to wake up from. So I think this is very much Mark Alexander's way of reflecting on his own past, reflecting very much on on the forms of power that were once adopted in the past. And at the centre of the exhibition, you have these 
these great rusting steel rings. It's as if they're the discarded frames that these images were once intended to sit within. But I think there's also a very strong invitation in this show with its juxtaposition of present and past to think meaningfully about history. I think of these works of art as a challenge. They are, if you like, they are, each one is a link in a chain. And if we can learn how to join them together, we will connect and have a deeper sense of our own history, of where we come from. Now here we have a series of paintings inspired by one of the most famous groups of pictures in the whole history of Western art, Van Gogh's series of sunflower paintings. And I think what Mark Alexander's doing here is he's, he's looking out and he's remembering this great moment in the history of painting when Van Gogh is full of optimism, full of hope. He's got this idea that he's going to set up a new colony of artists in the south of France. His friend Gauguin is going to come and see him. And so he paints the sunflowers, these rich yellow pictures. He wants them to be inflamed with the light of the sun itself, to be full of that sense of, of oneness with nature and oneness with God that Van Gogh hoped to find in the south. Now, of course, we know, Mark Alexander knows, that that story went horribly dark. Van Gogh ended up having a psychotic episode, cutting off his ear. It was the beginning of the end of his mental stability. And that's what the sunflower paintings mark. And I think in a sense, you might see this, this group of black sunflower paintings as a rather dark commentary on, an ironic commentary on, on what was actually going to lie behind Van Gogh's bright dream. But I think it's more complicated than that. Mark Alexander once said that what he loves in Mozart is the contrast between moments of extreme optimism and extreme darkness. And I think that's exactly what you've got in this set of pictures. They're poised between darkness and hope. At first, when you look at them, they look like they're all the same as each other. But then when you get into them, you realise that each one has its own life, its own sense of individuality. That there's a kind of, there's a kind of life that's sprung from the darkness of disappointment. And that these pictures have that. They, they've got this incredible sense almost as if Van Gogh's son has become a black hole of emotional energy that can draw you in. They're fantastically viscous and tactile. This, this black paint, you can almost, you can almost smell it. It's, you can smell it. It's got that, it's got that power and, and tactility about it. What's most striking about the pictures is their intense bipolarity. They're made from black and white. Um, you've got this sense that Van Gogh's sunflowers, those bright yellow blooms, have almost turned from suns into black holes, holes of energy drawing you in. They're made from the actual material of Van Gogh's art, the death of his dream. But from that death of that dream, Mark Alexander's drawn in his own new kind of energy. So Mark, what was the inspiration for this wonderful Shield of Achilles series? Well, I think the first inspiration was uh, an engraving that I saw when I was about nine of Louis XIV. Um, the Sun King. The Sun King, exactly. Um, he was a son, but he looked rather unhappy. Um, I was probably a son and I was rather unhappy, so it was, you know, there was a connection there. And why did you use your own, your own image in place of his? 
I was expressing my own emotions, so probably that's what I used, why I used it. Why did you choose to make yourself, um, to have the image of yourself as a child in the centre of the picture? This is all too personal now. This is, this is sort of a bit Freudian, but um, well, it was the one I sort of understood, I guess. And I'd already painted a series of portraits of myself as a baby. And I'd painted that one, and that one actually got stolen, that look, um, from outside my flat in Oxford. And um, yeah, I still had the photograph, so I decided to use it. I thought it had rather a kind of, seemed to gaze into the abyss, and that's, that's the look I was after. I also wanted to ask you about the, the way that the images look. Seems to me to be quite, you know, very powerful, the way that, the sc that you've almost overloaded the screen printing with, with paint. Well, we use very rough canvas and also we use paint and normally use um, silk screen ink. But by using a paint which isn't the right product, you get a much more random effect, which is exactly what I wanted. Do you have a favourite among them? Yeah, there's the first one that we used that was full of um, too much oil. It all ran and the nose has run and it's very faded and I like that one the best. It's hardly there, it's, which is what I wanted. I wanted them to be hardly there, full of power and yet as if something's just coming through the ether, a sort of radio signal. How did you get from there to the black sunflowers? Well, literally, as, once I'd managed to make the, the big shields, um, I'd mixed up a lot of paint and I left one of the lids of the paint. It, it shriveled up and dried and looked like a sunflower. And then I just, it just led me to paint, the, paint them. What, do, what for you is the measure of, of success with those pictures? I think in our work of art, works if it, if it looks good, if it looks as if it's always been there. And I think some of them look like they've always been there. So my last question is, what do you think you're going to do next? Well, I have an idea. I've been working with, um, they're planning this amazing project in Berlin where they're, they're building the old castle um, by Schluter. And um, I've been working just while I've been in Berlin with a friend um, on a, one of the big capitals for this castle. And he's a fantastic woodcarver. He's done some work for me in the past. And he restored um, an altarpiece called the Mannheim altarpiece, which is an extraordinary thing. It's about nine meters high. Um, a good deal of it is lost from the war, but there's a fantastic element to it of um, Adam and Eve as children. And uh, Eve's weeping because she has to leave paradise and I think I can do something with that. I look forward to it. Me too. Are we finished? Can I go now? <laughs>